Hello from CS Magic. In this episode, we're going to see how we can build some buttons and then reuse those components in Flash Catalyst. Let's get going. I have an Illustrator file that I've been working on in Flash Catalyst, and I'd like to convert these items up here into buttons. The buttons are going to help us to navigate through the chapters in the book when we're done. Let's select this button here. Look at the panel. I can see that this group has been selected. The layers panel is really handy because it allows us to select objects or collections of objects very quickly. For instance, I can pick the next one simply by clicking the group here and it selects the entire group. If I twiddle down the first group, we can see all of the components that live inside. I can see another group inside of the first group. This group consists of the outline of that rounded corner rectangle and the fill. These are separate objects in Flash, and so when that Illustrator file gets imported, those single objects in Illustrator get converted into multiple objects in Flash Catalyst. Let's select that first group now. Simply click on the top level of the group in the Layers panel. Now I'd like to convert this into a button. I can do this with my heads-up display. Choose the button component here. Buttons in Flash Catalyst are like buttons in other applications. We can define different states, such as the up, over, down, and disabled states. Let's do that now. Let's first look at the up state. Click on up, and now we can see all of the states listed here. We're beginning with the up state, and let's go back to the Layers panel. I want to work on the fill. Select the pink rectangle and look down at its properties. Its fill currently is a pink color. Let's change it to a gradient. I don't like this particular color scheme, so let's see if we can change it. To choose different colors for the gradient stops, simply choose the swatch that's underneath the triangle, and then you can pick. Let's pick a reddish color, and then for this one, we'll pick something yellowish. Kind of looks like it's on fire. I like that. Now we have a look for the state while it's at rest. Let's take a look at what happens when we go over. We want it to be obviously different, and so let's make a highlight and a different fill. We'll pick a solid color this time. Something reddish and also we'll make an inner glow. So closing up common, we can go down to filters and we can add a filter. I'm just playing with the strength and the blur. All right, let's go take a look at the down state. In the down state, we'll add an outer glow. I'm just picking colors here out of the air. And we'll change the fill color. And then finally, our disabled state. And we'll just make it gray when it's disabled. There we go. So now we have all of the states of this button defined, and we can leave the button definition. Take a look at the Layers panel. You'll see that the Layers panel now has Group, 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 and Button. This means that the button is a component, and since it's a component, we can use it over and over. There's one more thing that we've got to do for this button so that we can reuse it easily. Double click on the button, and then from the Layers panel, choose the text here. We're going to convert this to the label text of the button. 
Because we've converted it to label text, this allows us to use the same button component and then change the label to also change the appearance of the numbers on the button without having to rebuild this button over and over and over again. Go back to my top level and let's take a look in my library. You can see up here I've got button 2. Select button 2 and then drag it onto the stage. We'll just line it up on top of that group and we'll do it a few more times. And now we can change the labels. So this one here should be chapter 2. This should be chapter 3. And this is chapter 4. Let's go back to our layers panel and we'll delete these extra pieces now. Hold down your shift key and then delete. Let's preview these buttons and see what they do. If I hover, you can see that appearance. If I push the button, you can see the change. Of course, I haven't defined anything for these buttons to do yet. And that's a great reason for you to come to my Introduction to Flash Catalyst webinar at csmagic.com. Hope to see you there.